I have a seven-year-old son named Warren. Every day, he comes up with new questions for me. Dad, why do we dream? Dad, why do people cry when they are sad, but also when they are happy? Dad, how much does the Earth weigh? How do planes fly? Uh. Learning is fun. Today, hey, let's, let's explore, explore and learn, learn together. together. Dad, my friend told me a baby biting another baby's finger was the most watched YouTube video. I have a great idea. Let's have my baby brothers bite each other's fingers. We will get a million views. Uh, I thought we were building an educational channel. Our plan was to talk about coronavirus vaccines, right? Oh, I forgot. Come on, it'll be interesting. <sighs> Not as interesting as babies biting each other's fingers. First, let's look at the virus. Coronavirus is an RNA virus that has lived alongside us for a long time. The name Corona is from Latin, meaning crown. Under an electron microscope, the virus looks like it's wearing a crown. Oh yeah, it does look like a crown. Don't let the elegant name fool you. Coronavirus can be passed from one type of animal to another and cause humans to become very sick. The two most recent outbreaks of coronavirus, SARS in 2002 and MERS in 2012, were believed to have been passed to humans by palm civets and camels. The current COVID-19 pandemic is believed to have started in a seafood market in Wuhan, China, where live animals were being sold. From there, it spread across the world. At the end of 2020, over 83 million people have gotten COVID. And over 1.8 million people have died from it. These are the known cases. The actual number may even be higher. Wow! What happens when you catch COVID-19, though? We don't yet understand the disease fully. Some people catch COVID-19 and carry on without noticing, but some people get really sick from it. The most consistent symptom is losing your smell and taste, which is found in roughly eight out of ten people with COVID. Other symptoms include fever, chills, cough, muscle ache, headache, diarrhea, and feeling tired. Like when you have the flu. Yes. Then about 15% of COVID patients suffer from serious symptoms like struggling to breathe. Around 5% of COVID patients develop life-threatening conditions like failure of their hearts or lungs. These patients who develop life-threatening conditions are usually older, more obese, or have other illnesses. That's really scary. The scare doesn't end there. Many people who've recovered from COVID-19 report symptoms of feeling tired, chest pain, joint pain, difficulty breathing, memory or sleep problems long afterwards. Imaging of their hearts, lungs, or brains often show tissue damage, which are likely long-term. The disease is still poorly understood, but what seems to be happening is coronavirus triggers our immune system to attack our own cells, causing damage to our bodies. I don't want to catch COVID-19. Me either. This brings us to the topic of vaccines. Scientists around the world worked very hard to develop vaccines. Right now, there are over 40 vaccines in human trials and over 150 in preclinical trials. Currently, in the U.S., two vaccines have been approved by the FDA. They are the Pfizer, BioNTech, and Moderna vaccines. So let's look at some common questions. Warren, do you mind reading the questions, then I will try to answer them. Sure, Dad. How could the vaccines have been developed so fast? Typically. A vaccine takes 10 to 15 years to develop. Before COVID-19, the fastest one was for mumps, 
and it took four years. There were several reasons the coronavirus vaccine was made and approved at record speed. First, researchers did not start from scratch. Scientists were already studying coronavirus after SARS and MERS outbreaks. Overall, people have been studying coronavirus for over 50 years. Second, probably the most important reason, governments and donors poured many billions of dollars into vaccine development. The U.S.'s Operation Warp Speed assumed the financial risks pharmaceutical companies normally take, and allowed multiple companies to start developing and manufacturing without knowing which of their vaccines would work. In this race, Pfizer eventually finished first, and Moderna came in a close second. Third, because of the damage COVID-19 has done around the world, scientists and researchers worked super hard and gave it everything they had. Government agencies also eliminated bureaucratic delays given the urgency of the situation. And lastly, the two winners, Pfizer and Moderna, both use mRNA technology, which is actually not new. Researchers have been studying it for almost 30 years. So, how good are the vaccines? Both vaccines have two doses. Measuring seven days after the second dose, Pfizer's vaccine has an efficacy of 95%. Measuring 14 days after the second dose, Moderna's vaccine has an efficacy of 94%. Both are really, really good, way above people's expectations. What is efficacy? Efficacy measures how good the vaccine is at reducing infection. So the human trial goes something like this: Let's say you have 200 people. You divide them randomly into two groups of 100 each. With one group. You give them the vaccine. With the other group, you give them a placebo, which is something with no effect. In a double-blinded study, neither the people giving the shot nor the people receiving the shot know whether they're getting the vaccine or the placebo. This is to decrease bias. And then you follow the people and see how many developed COVID. Let's say in the vaccine group, no one caught COVID, but in the placebo group, ten people caught COVID. Then you have an efficacy of 10 minus 0 divided by 10, which is 100%. Let's say in the vaccine group, two people caught COVID, and in the placebo group, 10 people caught COVID. Then you have an efficacy of 10 minus 2 divided by 10, which is 8 divided by 10, or 80%. Do we still need to wear masks and wash our hands after getting the vaccine? Yes, it's recommended we continue to wear our masks and keep good hand hygiene even after the vaccine. This is because one, the vaccines are not 100% effective. Two, coronavirus mutates rapidly. Multiple different strains have been reported, such as the one from the UK. Wearing masks and washing our hands will protect us from these strains, even if the vaccines are less effective against them. Plus. We are still in the flu season. It also helps protect us against the flu. Three, the vaccines will protect you from getting sick from COVID-19, but it's not totally clear whether they can fully protect you from spreading the virus to others. Wearing masks and washing your hands will help protect others. Can the vaccine cause you to have COVID-19? No. Both vaccines contain genetic codes for the spike protein, which is a surface protein on the virus that helps them enter our cells. The protein does not cause us to have COVID. mRNA vaccines do not use live virus that cause COVID-19. Can the vaccines cause you to test positive for COVID? No. The current viral tests look for viral content. Neither of the vaccines will cause you to have a positive test. Can mRNA vaccines change our DNA, causing us to have mutations? No, the mRNA will not enter our cell nucleus where our DNAs are. They will go to a place called ribosomes in the cytoplasm of our cells, where mRNAs give instructions to produce proteins. After the proteins are made, our cells break down the mRNAs. Next, the cells will display spike proteins, which will trigger an immune response from our bodies. Our immune system will destroy these cells and remember spike protein. 
So if an actual coronavirus enters our body, it will launch an attack quickly and effectively. How long does the vaccine protect us for? The vaccines are quite new, so we don't have a lot of data on that. What we have seen is if someone is infected with COVID-19, it is very, very rare to get reinfected within 90 days. So the vaccines will most likely protect us for at least three months. It likely protects us much longer than that, but we just don't have enough data. As millions of people get the vaccines, we'll soon have the data we need. But if COVID-19 continues into 2021, there is a chance we'll need a booster shot. Does a single shot of either vaccine offer protection? Moderna studied 2,000 patients who only received the first shot of its vaccine versus placebo. After 14 days, the efficacy was between 80 to 90 percent. Pfizer has not published anything similar, but some experts have guessed the efficacy of Pfizer's first shot may also be around 80 percent. Are the two vaccines similar? Yes, and they both consist of a small portion of coronavirus's genetic code for making the virus's spike protein. Moderna's contains a bit more than Pfizer's. They are both delivered in a tiny, tiny fat bubble called the lipid nanoparticle. People tend to get similar side effects, usually worse after the second dose of the vaccine. They include soreness at the injection site, feeling tired, fever, or even headache. These are signs that your immune system is gearing up to target the spike protein, and they are normal. Side effects tend to be worse in younger people because they have a more robust immune system. What are the differences between Pfizer and Moderna vaccines? Pfizer's vaccine is for people 16 and older. Moderna's vaccine is for people 18 and older. The two doses of Pfizer vaccine are given 21 days apart, and Moderna's are given 28 days apart. Probably the biggest difference between the two vaccines is how they need to be stored. Pfizer's vaccine needs to be shipped at negative 70 degrees Celsius. This is very, very cold. Most facilities don't have the capacity to store medicine at that temperature. Moderna's vaccine can be shipped at negative 20 degrees Celsius and can stay stable at 2 to 8 degrees Celsius for 30 days. This makes Moderna's vaccine much easier to transport and store. Some preliminary data from Moderna shows its vaccine not only prevents symptoms, it also prevents asymptomatic COVID-19 cases. Pfizer so far has not revealed similar data. There are also some claims that either vaccine is less effective in certain populations. But are they true? Let's look at one example. There's the claim that Moderna vaccine has 100% efficacy in Asians, while Pfizer vaccine only has 75%. Here's the data. Pfizer enrolled 796 Asians in the vaccine group and 808 in the placebo group. Moderna enrolled 616 Asians in the vaccine group and 684 in the placebo group. Out of Pfizer's vaccine group, one person developed COVID. Out of its placebo group, four people developed it. So four minus one divided by four equals 75% efficacy. Out of Moderna's vaccine group, no one developed COVID. Out of its placebo group, three people developed it. So three minus zero divided by three equals 100% efficacy. Out of the 2,900 people enrolled in both studies, the difference in efficacy came down to the one person who took Pfizer vaccine and then developed COVID symptoms. Now the question is, can this difference be explained by chance? For instance, if this person was enrolled in Moderna's vaccine group, could the same thing have happened to him? Did the person get infected right after getting the vaccine before his immune system could react to the vaccine? In science, we run statistical analysis to decide this. And the result tells us we cannot be fully confident that Pfizer's and Moderna's difference in Asians is not due to chance. 
So the answer is, we really don't know whether Moderna's vaccine is more effective in Asians compared to Pfizer's. It may or may not be. We simply don't have enough data to make that conclusion. But either way, taking the vaccine protects you against COVID-19 more than not taking it. Three more vaccines are likely to be approved in early 2021. Novavax uses a protein to trigger the immune response, whereas AstraZeneca and Johnson & Johnson use the viral vector technology to trigger it. Okay, let's wrap it up. Today's topic may be a bit hard to understand for the younger audience. Maybe we'll have a more lighthearted topic in our next episode. But if people are interested, we can talk more about the COVID vaccines in the future. Please remember to leave your comments and remember to smash the like and subscribe buttons. We will work hard to make more interesting videos for you. Thank you for watching. Here's my joke of the day. What kind of tree fits in your hand? I'll give you some time to think about it. Three, two, one. The answer is palm tree. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for watching. Please remember to click the like and subscribe buttons below. You can turn on the notification bell if you wish to be notified when our next video comes out. Thanks. <laughs>